been 150 years since Charles Darwin challenged our way of thinking with the assertion that humans share a common ancestry with apes. Despite our modern appearance, we still exhibit telltale signs of that ancestry. Wisdom teeth are a holdover from a time when we needed larger jaws to chew food. And an infant's grasp reflex is a holdover from when we lived in trees and infants had to hold on to their mother's fur. These quirks no longer serve any practical purpose, but they do serve as a reminder of what we used to be. Throughout our evolution, we've amassed a whole range of traits which would end up being a lot more important. Scientists have focused on two of these traits in recent times, and that has changed the way we view our ancient history. By walking erect, we were able to free our hands and start changing the world. And our advanced language skills have allowed us to express our imagination and carry out impressive joint ventures. These upgrades help turn an ape into an architect. According to Darwin, we can trace our evolutionary lineage back to when we left the trees and headed out into the savannah. Scientists are now scrambling to find the creature that rose up from all fours. The oldest impression left by a creature walking erect was found on the savannas of East Africa, largely because of a remarkable event that occurred almost four million years ago. A few days earlier, Mount Sadiman had erupted. Large amounts of volcanic ash had blanketed the surrounding plains, where a small party came walking. When the ground hardened, their footprints were preserved. They would remain hidden for 3.6 million years, until scientists came to Litoli and discovered them. Robin Crompton and his research team in Liverpool are trying to figure out just who could have made those footprints. Some people say that those footprints are made by an animal which is walking almost exactly the same way as we do. Other people say that no, they were walking very much as an orangutan or a chimpanzee. So we, what we're trying to do is work out which of these, these possibilities is, is the most accurate. A prime suspect for the maker of those footprints is this creature, Lucy. Her species, Australopithecus afarensis, lived in this very place around the time of Mount Sadaman's eruption, and we know that they walked erect. This is what's left of the individual we call Lucy. She's an amazing specimen. This is the only specimen we have where we can accurately get the proportions of the different parts of the body. You know, she's 46% complete, which means that we can reflect um, that across. So the other half uh, gives us a, you know, an almost sort of 75% complete skeleton. But just how human-like was Lucy, really? Scientists are still debating whether she walked like an ape or like a human. A crucial body part that could answer that question is missing. No feet is a problem. We'd really like feet. Um, Chimpanzee feet, gorilla feet, are like hands. They've got a big toe that sticks out sideways so they can grasp, and obviously it's very useful for climbing. We don't know whether Lucy had a big toe like that. We don't have her big toe, and we don't have the bones it inserts to, and that's key. But Robin Crompton thinks he can solve the mystery without Lucy's feet, using the footprints found at Litoli. The cameras, the six of them picking up the motion of 
11 markers on my foot which are tracking the motion of the bones underneath them. So we're trying to work out the relationships between the bone movements and the pressures that are generated and the forces that are generated to propel my walking. If the Latoli footprints were made by an ape-like creature, walking with its hips and knees bent, they should be distinctly different from prints left by humans. And when humans walk upright, we characteristically, the forces go like that, like that, a double hump pattern. Very, very diagnostic of modern human walking. But when you walk with bent hips and bent knees, rather like a chimpanzee, the forces are rather like those that you'd recall from a chimpanzee. They go up, they form a plateau, and they go down. The team is starting to get an idea of just how the creatures at Latoli were walking. So far, our results would indicate that the maker of the Latoli footprints was walking upright. We're getting that pattern. The bent hip, bent knee walking creates a different um, uh, transmission of, of pressure to, to the ground and does not seem so far to be compatible with the Latoli footprints. That conclusion is confirmed when the scientists put computers to work on a different task using bone structure to figure out the most efficient way for Lucy to walk. So this is evolutionary robotics. This is what evolutionary robotics is all about. The big contribution is that from the fossil, we're getting an unbiased estimate of how this morphology is best able to move. The computer simulates thousands of different ways of moving the body forward. Most are evolutionary dead ends, but some pass inspection and are subject to further analysis by the software. Learn how to walk efficiently. For example, sometimes we'll find we'll get skipping locomotion out of it. So uh, the computer's able to find these, it explores these, but this isn't as efficient as walking. This is the team's best guess so far when trying to recreate Lucy's way of walking. I favour the, uh, the fully upright interpretation. The computer simulations show that if this animal tried to walk in a bent hip, bent knee fashion, it would be enormously energetically expensive to do so. The Lytoli footprints and the computer models demonstrate that erect walking existed on the savannas of East Africa four million years ago, and that it was a lot more modern and human-like than previously thought. It also means that Lucy can't have been the first erect walking pre-human. Early signs of bipedalism must have existed in some other creature further back in time. When this man made a spectacular find in Kenya's central highlands a few years ago, a suitable candidate emerged. But it was also a source of new headaches. What Kiptalam Chiboya found proved that everyone including Darwin, had been wrong. Here in the Tugan Hills, nature has unearthed the geological epoch known as Miocene. Somewhere around here, more than five million years ago, humans and